things about it. Anyway, that's fine. So I'm going to talk about first of all. I had a nice time for us to do, but guys, to give me a chance to tell us what's going on in Sri Lanka. Thanks all. Great, great. like my hope, like everything whatever you guys are saying here, I feel like I'm part of it. That's what I feel, that thing that's again with other people, but I feel like you are really concerned about your humans. And some part you have already covered, I'm going to correct a little bit of, little bit misunderstandings, but overall, I think you are going to find it. So, I'm, I'm, People have advertised here, I'm working at, this is a at Argonne, but Argonne National Lab, but I'm coming here, and I'm not representing Argonne National Lab, I'm representing the Illinois Tamil Human Rights Group. I'm just representing that. Uh, so before I go into the detail, naturally, you mentioned about her. So anyway, I don't have to go into the detail, but I step one of the great human rights activists in Sri Lanka who belonged to the Singhalas and fought. She talked for the minorities, she talked about the minor disappearance, she fought, and she had death threats, but still she worked hard and we lost her a couple of days ago. She got the award in 1999 from uh, UN Secretary General, uh, Kofi Annan, and Human Rights Watch is also on her. You can go and search in her name. You can see a lot of YouTube videos about her activity. This is a very big loss for human rights activists in Sri Lanka. So I'm going to talk about what happened in Sri Lanka in May 2009. And uh, what am I showing here? The people there, they went through that. So not like you. I felt I got into this activity only after May 2009. All this, and I felt the pain. Now I can see the pain of other people. That's the thing. Because when so many people, thousands of people, that you don't know exact number how much. It's more than 40,000, probably it goes up to 120,000. The world will get in. The effect, there's a one community lost bad. brief outline of my talk is going to be, I'll just give some background information. Howard already mentioned some of it. I'm going to correct a few things there. Then talk about past violations. And what is considered to be the final solution? That's, people said it's 2009 that the war ended. That's the final solution. That's not true. Still the problem exists. And the current situation. And what are the actions we can do from here? So the important thing, my one, is international pressure. We have to give international pressure because there are in Tamils there, there's nobody else to talk to freely over there. Only people who can't do anything is the international government. That we have to bring the awareness and go from there. So it's a brief background. There's a shared history dates back to 500 BC. The Tamils and Singhalese, all of them came during that time. Because there was a Tamil king, even in 200 BC, called Elala. So currently, the Singhal is as about 75%, Tamils are 16%. Actually, before independence, they were 23%. Because various activities brought them down, and the Muslims are 9%. How it covered it, anyway, I'll go this again. When Portuguese came here, around 1500, there were three kingdoms. One was the Tamil Kingdom, which is in general, that as you said, is not an East, and that's Tamils consider that's their homeland. And the Singhalese Kingdom, two Singhalese Kingdom on the left side. What happened in 1505 when the Portuguese came, they kept two separate leaves, they controlled the country. They continued, Dutch came later, they kept it in that way. Then British in 1815, around 1815, they captured the whole island. And then for administration purpose, they kind of combined all into one country. And when they left in 1948, they left as a one country. They got it as a two countries and they left it as a one country. That caused the problem 
because the majority Sinhalese, they have the control and naturally the Tamils, the minorities were discriminated. So when they were discriminated, initially they had non-violence practiced in the late 40s and 1980s. But that always responded with violence. Whenever there is a non-violence, I'll give you a few examples. So I'll talk about the past violations. Non-violent protests, one of these one in 1961, there was a protest in minority area. It responded. They responded with the violence. When this is a non-violent one, then eventually they have to take him to the hospital. Military came and attacked. And finally, the most important point, there is no investigation and nobody got punished. Then another incident, Thomas, the education is more important. So there was a library. So that's Thomas considered education is important. So the library was considered to be in Vietnam, one of the best library in the Southeast Asia. And then 1991, there was some other incidents. Government military and some government ministers came and burned the library. Burned the library and they lost very valuable documents. And again, no inquiry, no investigations. And one other thing is a big thing is 1993, there's a Black July, called Black July. There was a big war. So many people died. So the property is damaged. They looted the properties and nothing happened. Think about a person in this situation, how the surround. I have faced this one similar situation, but I had clothes at the time in one condition. Anyway, so again, no investigation. That's a history of pattern. And if you look at that one, I, I'm not going to go into the details. These are the history of patterns. All this time, there's a continuous attacks several times. In the last two, that 1983, May and July, I was, I was part of it. I got affected. But everywhere, the thing is, each time there's no action taken, the, the, how many uh, the intensity went up, went, went high. Every time it goes up and up. And even, see, even the majority single youth were there in 71 and 89. I mean, I saw that thing. And no inquiry. Everything is, when you don't end into inquiry and everybody <coughs> that escape, they continue that pattern. And we end up with, at the end, now we have, say, for more than 40,000. We leave it there. Next time it's going to be much, much higher. So what happens? So as I said, there's a period, you how I missed this, between 1940s and 80s. There was, there was non-violent protests happened. And it's fake, because whenever they have an agreement with the government, they were never implemented. And when the, whenever there is a, a, a non-violent protest, it, protest, it end up with the violence and violence and everything going down. And then eventually in the 70s, they introduced a policy called standardization in education. That brought an issue because for Tamil's education was important, so that's a discrimination in education took their youth's life away. At that time, they got frustrated and they started the uh, rebel movement, and that started in 80, somewhere around 83 and went on to 2009. And finally, at the end of the 2009, they thought, we are going to the pollution, exact, uh, uh, because at the end of the war, the problem is solved. Before everybody agreed there was a problem, only thing the international governments and everybody thought, okay, don't use the violence, but there's a problem that has to be settled. Now, war is over, but the problem is still remains. So to show something what happened in due time, I'm going to show you, we, I have seen worse videos than this, or pictures than this, but I'm going to show something came from an independent channel from England. Channel 4, it broadcasted a Sri Lanka's killing scene. It's about 45 minutes, but I'm going to show, we edited it to 10 minutes, I'm going to show. This is going to have a very disturbing message pictures, so kind of, I hope you don't affect me too much. So, great. And we can see the other So they had three words, three parts in the first part. 